Welcome to the map Forts of Eisen in BFME 1 on the page 2.22 for a video commentary between Gondor and Isengard. Soldiers versus the Uruks. Uruk put furnace opening and blacksmith farm opening for Gondor. And the goal here for Gondor is to destroy the lumber mill or to deal economical damage. And obviously the goal on the other hand for Eisen is to deny this from happening. Slash them. Come on, soldier, move it. I mean, the question is, how much damage will he be able to deal? One of the soldiers has been taken down already, that's very good. And when you kill two soldiers, you can actually fight the 2v2 situation. The rocks on the ground can be used to turn the fight into your fever. Good positioning here from Gondor. He keeps moving all the time. Super important. In the meantime, Hobbit was able to get the farm at the top right side. And he's now moving forward. More Uruks are being recruited every 19 seconds. Super fast recruit time for the Uruks. And uh, the goal of, of, of Isengard is to get the Uruk pit to level 2 before the Knights of Gondor can come out. Give us some room. Okay, one of the soldiers has been basically taken down. That's pretty good. And also the slaughterhouse is in a perfectly safe spot. That's a great opening for Aizen in this matchup. I like it. The stable building up for Gondor. But before the stable builds up, the Uruk pit is going to hit level 2 before the first knight will be recruited. That's pretty good. That means you will have your pipemen ready just in time to counter the enemy horses. Very important to do that. The settlement will be protected, no problemo. And Aizen is now going for a potential counter push with the Uruks. The Hobbit was able to get to the uh, settlement, moonwalking a little bit. And now his mission is to kill some workers. And also this way you can hurt the economy from your opponent big time, you know. And this Uruk will have to be dealing with this Hobbit. And this creates so much room and also um, momentum for you as Gondor player. The farm has been destroyed. You want to switch the formation always before they trample. No formation swapped with the Uruks. And the Knights of Gondor will clean them up. No problemo. Okay, in the meantime, that's going to be the first creep for Aizen. That's pretty good. Gondor wasn't able to deal any economical damage to his opponent yet, but the Hobbit keeps going, you know? He will get level 2 very, very soon. And now he will get cloaked. Super annoying creature. And because of that, his opponent was used, uh, forced to use the Palantir just to be able to deal with the Hobbit. And now he needs to uh, get some laborers up on the field to produce resources from the Slumber Mill. This creep will be taken by Aizen. The money also. Beautiful micro from the Gondor player. Getting a beautiful trample off. Avoiding the pikemen. Getting more and more power points. And one more beautiful trample. What a nice micro from the Gondor player. And Aizen is scouting. Just to make sure that Gondor is not able to creep. He was able to creep this at the top right side. With this, with this knight. Almost level 4. And each level will make you very very strong. And at some point of the game. When you are level 4 or 5. You can actually fight the enemy pikemen too. With your forge blades and heavy armor. Oh my god, be careful there. And good map control for Aizen. Good looking base. The Uruk pit got level 3. Means faster production speed for the Uruks and Uruk pikemen. He's towering up. You always want to make like 3 towers, you know. One here, one here, and one also behind. Just to feel a bit more safe. But before upgrades, Gondor can't really go for a beast rush. He has a full beast now. Um, no upgrades yet. He has in total 2 knights of Gondor on the field. He didn't go for the 3rd knight super early. It means he will have not shields the horseman uh, the knight shields anytime soon very good looking map control for aizen pretty good i like it we get to see more and more furnaces in the base of aizen building up more towers just mentioned before and also just camping here to watch over the creep at the bottom right corner and also this creep is still remaining 
So far, Gondor was only able to creep this lamb and also this lamb. So two creeps taken by Gondor. That's going to be his third creep. That's pretty good. And if we take a look into the power points from Gondor, we can see he's getting closer and closer for the Great Company Special Summon, which is the power spike he's looking for and he's waiting for. Okay, so Forge Fleets purchase on these knights. This creep will be contested. You can't out damage the, the knights when they forge blades. So if you're a pikeman, that's not possible. The creep taken by Gondor is expected. And the money as well. Beautiful done from the Gondor player, Marge. The barracks building up now to counter the enemy pikeman. Also very important. And that's going to be the last remaining creep, which also will be eventually taken. Nah, there are too many pikemen, bro. Ooh, but the damage is crazy. And Gondor took the creep and will also be able to get out there with the banner carrier. Oh my god, what a beautiful micro there. Getting like five creeps on the map for Sovison is pretty impressive to me. He's now level four, Knights of Gondor, has great company unlocked from his spellbook, and he's gonna be prepared for the eventual beast rush with the shields and forge blades combination and while you are while you are rushing the enemy castle with your knights of gondor your soldiers of gondor can be used to counter the pikemen and when you see a level 5 horse like this you can see what he's able to do to the enemy pikemen you know now they have also armor plus um, bleeds they are super tanky but if you want to get them super super tanky you need to also get the shields super important upgrade against arrows which will be a counter to all these sentry towers and here's a full base of sentry towers beside the one missing spot next to the armory but also armory is able to shoot we have no war riders yet for Aizen, so we need to keep that in mind and you need works to counter the enemy soldiers also very important elvin wood has been pleased Nice catch here with the Knights of Gondor, beautiful micro, and you can see levels mean so much, and of course also upgrades mean so much, because these Knights of Gondor have Forge Bleeds and Heavy Armor, and also in addition to that, they are up to level 5. Now we have Berserker to counter the enemy soldiers with the Forge Bleeds, that's gonna be a big ouchie, losing them will make you lose so much money, but the Berserker is not a joke. Still a very good map control for Aizen. His um, Forge Bleeds, Heavy Armor, and Benham. Didn't go for the Fire Upgrade just yet. And the Steeble is level 2, but no shields purchased for now because he has not the money for it. But he will have the money very, very soon. That's a very dangerous Knight of Condor. You want to be paying attention to this Knight, you know? This Knight is going to be causing a lot of problems. So Great Company hasn't been able to achieve too much for Gondor. There is not really too much to kill. Pikemen are as fast as the Great Company and they can always disengage. And that's exactly what they are doing. Now this, now this Pikeman is going to be painful, you know. Forge Bleed plus Heavy Armor, there is no chance you can fight and win against them. That's not going to be possible. Oh, be careful there with the level Oh no, man, that's ouchy, bro. If, you know, when you put them in the wedge formation, they have like a bigger engage range. And if you don't want them to engage automatically, you need to put them on the normal formation or on the whole ground stance, you know. Beautiful base action coming, destroying those level 2 furnaces, very important. That's gonna delay the level 3. Be careful with the Knight of Condor, he should be fine. Killing some pikemen over there, level 2 pikemen, don't any chance against the level 5 fully upgraded knights of gondor but every tower is shooting in the meantime and he will still be able to survive but losing this level 6 knight over there you know pretty painful if you ask me and playing this matchup also without walk riders uh, pretty impressive but you need to be paying attention to every single settlement non-stop to not feed power points to your opponent by losing your pikemen to the enemy soldiers you know so no um faramir no boromir also, Faramir Boromir could be a nice choice when it comes to counter the enemy, enemy pikemen. And also, Boro is a very great investment into the late game, just like Faramir is. You know, Faramir is wanting arrow, dealing hella damage to heroes like Lourdes and also Saruman. And the combination of the wanting arrow from Faramir plus the Easter Elite from Gandalf can actually one-shot almost every single hero in the game. You know, you basically wanting arrow plus Easter on Saruman and he's dead, you know? It's a level 1 horse only, you know, not very, very strong. And Forge Bleeds on the Spikeman, making it quite difficult. You can never fight this, by the way. 
on the Alvin Wood. Even on the Alvin Wood, you can fight this because they have shields, they have armor plus war bleeds. Two power points collected, which will be invested into the Gan of the White potentially. He's getting to recruit more and more soldiers. And what you can also do is combine them. Soldier Tower Guard combination can be pretty deadly, you know, and also very cost efficient too. Because all you need to do is upgrade only one of your units. For, for example, the soldier. You give them forge plates and heavy armor. And then you combine them with the tower guards. And also the tower guards will get the full upgrades. So you need to upgrade only once. To have to upgrade on the whole combo battalion. Which is super cost efficient. One of the advantages and benefits of combining units in BFME 1. Okay. 3000. Aizen has now Lurz upon the field. Armory has been demolished. Industry on the level 3 furnace, giving you 94 resources. That's a lot, you know. Pikeman has been slaughtered by the level 2 pikeman, uh, by the level 2 soldier, I mean. And also, Aizen is kind of falling apart a little bit, losing map control because he's lacking the, you know, the works. And when there are no works, there is no need for you to recruit the tower guards too. You can just pump out some soldiers, you know until you see Vorks from your opponent. So Lourdes, level 1, has still a long way to go until his level 3 power spike or level 5. He's gonna use the... Um, the cripple, but it won't even one-shot the knights because they have shields and also armor. Great company. The level 3 Lambert Mill has been destroyed. Almost 6 power points in the bank for Aizen. In this matchup against Gondor, you can actually go for the field of fires. So you don't need to go for the freezing rain. And when you go this route, like you basically go Warchant, Palantium, Industry, into the, into the, um, actually you can't even go into the Field of Fires when I think about this. You need first of all the Tainted Land to do this, you know? Because it's on the, on the other side of the tree. The Vestation will be chosen. That's gonna give him a lot of money. And the game is slowing down a little bit, you know, which is kind of good for Gondor. Because he will have Gana very, very soon upon the field. If I'm not mistaken, let me take a look into the money. Yes, sir. He's up to 4,000 in total. You know, that's pretty wealthy. And he has good map control too. We have Sharko upon the field. Sharko also one of the choices you can go for when it, count, when it comes to counter the enemy soldiers. You know, Sharko dealing hella damage with the trample. And almost one-shotting the soldiers, when they have, even when they have heavy armor. But to counter this, you can also combine the tower guard with soldiers. Very good combination over there. Pretty nice. Sharko is zooming. And Lourdes chilling. Armory has... I think Armory was demolished before the fire upgrade. That's why he has to build it up again. The bear though. The bear. Oh, good micro with the pikeman. Pikeman literally everywhere. <laughs> but not enough. Look, when you play Aizen against Gondor and you see your opponent doing this, what he's doing right now, what you can also do is you can combine your own pikemen with your Uruks. Uruk pikemen combination will eat the soldier tower guard combination alive, but the Uruk pikemen combination is not that great when it comes to fight against the enemy knights of Gondor. Because they can be trampled, they don't deal the revenge damage like normal pikes would deal with the porcupine formation. Ooh, no formation punishment. Sharku, level almost 3, and we will have Gandalf, the White, coming on the battlefield very, very soon. But look at the minimap, boys. This is not looking too hot for Gondor. Let's see if Gandalf can put, you know, can make the difference in this matchup. Alvisat arrives precisely when he means to, boys. Gan of the Grey will turn into the Gan of the White now. Beautiful. And all you need to do is avoid Lourdes. Super important to avoid Lourdes. Lourdes' cripple will pin you in place for 25 seconds, which is pretty long. Oh my god. Look, the experience share. Almost got level 2 out of that. Beautiful. And you want to always save your cripple exclusively for Gandalf. Don't ever use it on anything else. Okay, on the land they are pretty strong. There comes the lightning sword. Uh, 
Ooh, if they put if he would put them on the on the formation, it would be so good that actually. Okay, now Aizen is informed about the Gandalf's appearance on the battlefield, and that will kind of fo force it to play a bit more defensively with almost five power points in the bank for Gondor. Um, so getting very close to the Eagle Special Summon, which is pretty pretty good. And Aizen has still decent map control with the Field of Fire, as you can see the glow animation on the enemy on the Lumber Mills. He will also get a lot of cash. And in the ultra late game, it's all about money differential. It's all about equal management. And when you have much more wealthiness than your opponent, you can actually afford to lose army. You can play with like two, three Uruk pits and then pretty much pump out Uruks over and over and over again, you know? You can upgrade all of them and outspam your opponent from the from the battlefield. And Saruman will be recruited, another, another wizard, but this time from Aizen. The Lumber Mill is going to be destroyed right after reaching level 2. And Gondor, with the help of Ganav, of course, will take over the map, as expected. Ganav will always be the power spike you are looking for, is the best hero in the game. And one of the biggest advantages of playing the Gondor faction. But we have the White Wizard. I'm wondering if the Easter would kill him actually. Sharku is not full HP. I wanna see this. Not sure if he will die to this. Should not die. Nah, yeah. he's he's tanky though. He's tanky as a than a normal regular unit or hero. And Saruman was using the fireball. Oh beautiful catch with the lightning sword actually from the white wizard. Oh he got crippled though. Um, I don't know if, it, if you have what it takes, bro, to kill him, actually. He's gonna use Warchant. He has only Warchant damage leadership. And the cripple duration is going off. He's gonna Warm Tongue this and put the land. Aizen not covering this. He has to use the heal. Actually, Ganaf is getting chunked a lot. Oh, run, 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 run. Oh my god, he got betrayed and killed by his own summoned great company, bro. Oh no, I mean, these are three combos. He used heal, but still, you know, he still died uh, <laughs> for that level 7, which means longer revive time. You have a 3 minutes revive time for Ganna, which is very long. And this time should be favoring the Isengard player quite a lot to take over the map one more time. And now he has spiked already, you know, level 3 Lourdes. Only two more levels missing to get him to level 5. With super important power spike with the 60% DPS. For the allied units around him and of course saruman with his armor leadership and always a threat with the warm tongue and free experience every two minutes with the speechcraft you can level them up over and over again and the money advantage you will always save with the uh, field of fire so you basically need like three lumber mills three four lumber mills and you should never ever run out of resources anymore Sharku will be revived rank three Sharku. And he's going for archer ranges at both outposts to put them into, into the tower for the defense. But he has not a single one of them level 2 yet. That means he's missing the fire upgrade damage. And I believe he will not be able to make it at the outpost. He needs to demolish the structures in time to not feed power points to his opponent. But he's not demolishing them. He demolishes them now. That's pretty good. And also very important. And we have still the soldier tower guard combination. You see, in this game we see literally everything. The only thing we have not seen are war riders, and for that reason, Eisen was struggling for the map control. It was always the goal of 2.22 to make every unit needed, necessary, but also rewarding. I like the Uruk pit design, dude. You see, like white hand, white hand, white hand, white hand. They went overboard with the white hands. Four white hands on one singular structure. And these archers, um, you know, they are not really threatening <laughs> because Gondor lacks the damage leadership unless they fight around the statue. But in a battlefield, combo against combo, Aizen will always win this with triple leadership. I mean, it, at this point he has double leadership with Saruman and Warchant, but this already is more than what Gondor can provide. And also the Isengard combos have more units in, in them, you know. And more tanky units in the front line too. Beautiful fireball from the young wizard Saruman. Charku is back on the menu, boys. Seven power points collected for Aizen. Getting closer and closer for the Balrog special summon. And Ganav the White is back on the menu, boys. Rank 7. 
7 power points versus 2 power points after the Eagles. Now the Eagles are definitely able to change the outcome of the fight. When used correctly, your only mission with the Eagles should always be to kill Lourdes. And the second you kill Lourdes, your Gandalf will have the time for him to shine. So you basically can go, can go for a blast, you know, if you're Gandalf, once Lourdes is dead, you can play a bit more risky. You don't need to be afraid anymore of a potential cripple. Keep going. And also, Gandalf can be used, as seen in this game, as a power point generator. You know, it can generate a lot of power points for you. You want to blast them, actually. But he can't, he can't. Oh, he missed it. No. Should have fireballed them, actually. That's a huge cooldown. 4 minutes and 30 seconds for the, for the Warm Tongue. His arches inside in marketplace. He went. He's trying to go for the Grand Harvest, but I think he won't make it. There comes the Eagle Special Summon. They go on the, on the Lords. Lords, 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 Lords. He fireballed the wrong Eagle, and Lords has been killed. Now Gandalf is coming, boys. Easter he will be used. Kill him. Okay. Oh my God. That's a big fight for Gondor. Gandalf will be able to survive, but he's losing a lot of his knights. Even though the heroes are dead, the Eisen army is still looking pretty strong to me. There is just not enough raw damage power to fight against the army of Isengard. And your horses can't really fight against this pikemen, crossbowmen, combined units. He's looking for it. He can do it. No, 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 no. Microing around. Boom. Does he have heal though? He's going to use the bubble. And I think he's going to get in safety. Yeah. He's going to get in safety barely. I mean, Gandalf, um, of course, is a difference maker. Almost 8 power points collected after this fight for Gondor. He is getting very close to the EUD. But in the meantime, I, I want you to take a look into the minimap, boys, okay? Aizen was able to take over the map with the Vorks and Pikeman combination. So Gon... Huh? How, is, how did this happen, actually? I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. But that's not good, you know? You can't go in like this when you have no heal, no bubble, with like one person HP left. Gandalf is not a tank. He is not a tank. Yeah, you see in this game the importance of the map control. Super important. Always focus on the map control. I think Aizen did a better job in doing this against Gondor. And Lourdes back on the menu, boys. Almost level 4. Saruman was level 6. I mean, pretty much the same revive time like Gandalf, 3 minutes, and Sharko was level 5, so it's gonna take you 2 minutes and 30 seconds. The outpost will be potentially safe with the pikemen. I mean, you can always demolish this and build it again. It's faster to do that than repairing this. It will uh, cost you a lot of time to repair this, you know? But there is not gonna be a siege anytime soon. However, there is a strong army of Aizen, and he knows Gandalf is dead, and that's why he's able to step up like this. When he would know that Gandalf is alive, he can he can never do this. Because the, the Lourdes was just coming back to, on the battlefield, and Gandalf would just punish you over and over again, you know? Back away. Okay. So, um, 9 power points versus 16. The reason why evil need 20 power points while good need 10 power points for their ultimate special summon is because evil get power points from losing stuff, especially from losing heroes like Lourdes and Saruman. If you lose them, you will gain a lot of power points. So, like, just assume he would have EOD now and he would kill all this army. Losing this army, including Lourdes, would grant Aizen round about 2 power points actually in total and he would get a big step closer to, the, to his own Balrog. And in the super late game, it's super important to control the outpost as Gondor. If you can't control outpost as Gondor against Aizen in the late game, you are doomed to lose. You can't win. Armory, I mean not Armory, Siege Works for the Ballista. Sharku is back on the menu, boys. I like it. Now he has the ability leadership for the Works to make them a bit more tanky. You see, with the with them, he can actually trample into the combos. I mean, obviously, the combos have no leadership. I mean, and also no armor, which makes it kind of easy to kill them. 
And Sharku's damage should not be underestimated. Look, Sharku's damage, even into the Tower Guards, actually. Super nice. But you will get always some damage in return because Tower Guards are dealing you, uh, like, a revenge damage upon trampling. Land will be used and covered by Aizen. 17 and a half against almost 10. Almost 10. A quart is missing and Gallop is back on the menu. Oh, he's got boom, but they don't die, bro. They have so much leadership on this land. Oh, he catched them or not? Oh, the biggest lightning sword range ever, bro. Because the lightning sword, when you want to catch him, he can't get away from you, you know? Even if he teleports to this side of the map, the lightning sword, it, it, has, it has to only connect once. But the siege will begin very, very soon. And losing heroes, as mentioned before, get, giving you power points up to 19 power points now in total. I, Gondor needs to see that coming, and he needs to take a, take the outpost control now from his opponent as soon as, as potentially possible. There are two armies from Aizen. He has one army here with his Lurts and one army here with his Saruman. I think he's kind of smelling the potential EOD special summon, which will happen very, very soon. Um, and in order to beat the summon kind of in a defensive way, you need to siege him. You need to bring the fight to them. But I think he's yeah, he's going to bring some rams now to siege him. His command points kept though. He can't get any more units anytime soon. The money advantage, like mentioned before, he's able to stack so many units in the Uruk pit, into, in the Vork pit. He can also stack units in the siege works. And he can do all of that because of the insane money advantage he has over his opponent. Gondor's eco not looking too hard. He has still over 100, I'm joking, over 100 command points to fill until his command points kept. And the outpost will be fo fully focused. Almost level 10 again after, almost level 10. War of Power would be a juicer, I would love to see that. But he has blast only every 30 seconds, so you need to be careful about that. You can't blast every second, obviously. Lords is here now. Eagles will be summoned as uh, he sees the Lords exposed. And EOD will be summoned to counter the Balrog. EOD will be summoned to counter the Balrog. EOD actually murders the Balrog in a few seconds only. Beautifully done. But whenever you summon EOD defensively, then you can only kill the Balrog. You can't really do much more. And the army from Aizen is still pretty much untouched. And Lourdes has been killed. And Ganav is very close to level 10. That's going to be a very great game actually. I like it. I would love to see a War of Power in action, you know? Okay, he's gonna choose now. Yeah, you see, that's the ultimate late game situation now for Gondor. Because Gondor has so many additional summons. Now he has even Cloudbreaker. Boom! Level 10, boys! What a be This is the reason why this matchup is called El Clasico in BFME 1. Gondor against Aizen has been always, always the most entertaining and fun matchup to play to watch and to comment it, you know, since BFME 1 exists. Oh yeah! You shall not pass, son! He's not gonna get killed. Yeah, he's level 10, bro. Okay, never mind, he's level 10. Dude, Gandalf the one-man army, bro. <laughs> Let's go, Gandalf! But we have to fight wizard. It has to be good for something. <laughs> Let's go. That's gonna slow Eisen quite a lot. Seven minutes, um, you know, cooldown. Oh, he got crippled. Oh my god. Yeah, the most cost efficient hero against the most strongest hero. Who wins? Who wins? Watch where you're going. And that's a level 10, dude. I'm gonna show you guys the revive time of a level 10 Gandalf. It's gonna be four minutes. 4 minutes and also 3.5k resources. 3.5k resources. It's a lot of money and more so time you need to invest to get him back on the, on the field, you know? That's going to stink. It's not very good for a Gondor that this happened. Like 7 minutes cooldown on the Balrog and 4 minutes revive time on, on Gandalf, you know? That's a very long time. Considering that the ultimate summons have only 7 minutes cooldown. Now you see, it's at some point of the game, when you have no um, 
no archers and no rangers, no combos, it's super difficult for Gondor to win this extended fights against Aizen. You just can't. Your horses can't fight because even if you kill one pikeman, he will have more pikemen coming. You know? And he, all he needs to do is give them blades and banner. Oh, he's gonna use the cloud break that's gonna slow down the works. Look at their and uh, look at them glowing though with the work rider leadership from Sharku. They are demolishing this Knights of Condor, bro. Oh my god, strong. I like it. Level 8 Lurz. Saruman is gonna be there way faster compared to Ganav, of course. He has a couple of trebuchet and he has now the money to revive his Ganav. But I don't think he has the time to revive his Ganav because by the time he's trying to revive his Ganav, before he comes to the field, Balrog will be summoned already and destroy the Citadel. So I think you need to invest the money now into some more trebuchet upon the, uh, around the wall. He has 5,000 in the bank. Trying to go for outpost control, knowing that Balrog is going to be there very, very soon. And Aizen will not wait will not give you any time the barista is coming and the siege will continue and he knows that gondor will be leaving the game and the victory goes to isengard i hope you guys enjoyed this game if you did you know what to do leave a like subscribe i will see you next time until then take care of yourself keep hitting like a truck and as always stay beyond standards peace out boys